What's going on guys, it's Courtney again, uh, just to show you a quick little uh, Python script that I wrote uh, to interact with Cisco devices. Um, this is a sh pretty straightforward, um, not really in-depth script, but what it does is it'll actually go to the device, um, do a show logs command, and then parse the logs for specific information. And in this particular one, we're looking for um, line and um, protocol up-down messages, and then we'll just print out the count of how many we detected. Um, and and one of the cool things about this is that um, the way it's actually reading the CSV file is probably a little different than what pe most people are seeing but uh, when we get down to that in the source code we'll, we'll go into that detail so the two packages that you're going to need in order for this to work is this package called rich and netmiko um, rich is a um, a like a styling uh, library that you can run console applications and then you know give your console line some style and then NetMiko is the library that a lot of network engineers actually utilize to interact with most uh, networking devices. So those are the two uh, two um, packages you're going to need. And so the using it is pretty easy. You just run the uh, script dash p, and then you'll specify the parse file. So essentially, that'll be the the, the actual CSV file that you're going to be parsing. So we'll start here with this main function. This is the get logs function. And so what this will do is it'll take a parameter of the host IP address. Um, it'll go in and uh, let's see, it'll, here's my um, try accept clauses here, or blocks here. Um, here it'll try to make the connection with the connect handler and then it'll actually send the command um, show log to the device. It'll disconnect to make sure that we don't longer, well we technically no longer need that SSH session. And then from there, it'll console print unable to authenticate to host if it has an authentication error or a network timeout error. And then I always just catch a default exception and it raises. You don't really need to do that, but I just do that just to make sure it's more explicit and show that I'm, you know, doing some type of error handling and I'm getting more specific there. So once we get past this block here and it drops down to there, what will end up happening is that we'll complete our um, regex uh, patterns with the compile um, method. Um, and then from there, or the compile function, and then from there we'll um, do a find all method on the compile object, on the regex object that's created from the compile, and then parse the command results that came out from the show log, and then that's how we'll actually get the results. And then from there it'll print out it'll print out the link flaps detected and the length of that list, as well as the protocol flaps detected and the length of that list. Um, so that's pretty much how that function get logs works. Now, like I said, the reading of the file of the CSV file is a little bit unique in in the fact that I'm actually doing it with threads opposed to actually opening the file like with a with a, with just a standard uh, context manager like a lot of people do, and then the the script exit afterwards. I'm actually doing a, a forever loop, and what happens is it'll consistently uh, read the file. And if it sees any changes, even if it sees any changes, it'll start interacting on those devices as well. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. So the way that works is that we're going to have to define a queue first. Um, and so this will be essentially the data structure that's used to hold the, um, the, the host IP address that we're going to pull from the CSV file. Now, the way that's going to be executed is going to execute in a worker function that's here. And as you can see, it has its own while true loop. It gets a host from the queue. And then from there, it'll run the get logs function. And then from there, it'll uh, queue task is done. So at that point, you know that it tells the uh, queue that it's done and then it'll move to the next job, the next task. On this line here, this is where we're actually starting our thread. And that's going to be in the background, as we see with this um, daemon true um, option, which means that it'll be running as a background. Um, thread. Now, you have the argument parser, the arg parse like library if most people are familiar with, but this is essentially what gives us the command line ability to execute our scripts like a like a, a Linux script or something like that. Now, we parse the args and then we're going to say if we use the parse, the dash dash parse argument, grab the file and that will be the file name and then we're going to start our loop. From there, we're going to open the file, we're going to print that we're opening the file, then we're going to take the reader we're going to take that file and cast it to a CSV reader object from there you're going to loop over the reader object and for each row we're going to well that should say row but actually let's make this a little bit more well it doesn't matter at this point so 
each row it should be each row in in the reader and then from there if if there's a row we're just gonna go ahead and put uh, the item in the queue actually this is gonna bother me so let me fix this just because that's gonna totally bother me all right so So fix that and then it'll join the queue together and that's what it'll actually know to send that particular job in the queue to the worker and essentially it'll keep running through that until all the key, the, the items in the queue is, is, is done and then if there's nothing in the queue it'll essentially just keep running until it, that's, that's finished so let me show you what that looks like. So we got our my main dev machine here and let's pull this up. Hopefully you guys can see the font here. So perfect. Hopefully you guys can see this. So I'm in the, the Python script there. So we're going to say Python 3 when proto parse and then files devices.csv. Let's show you guys what that looks like. Yeah. My server has been acting a little slow these days. So there we go. And now it's working. So you see it'll tell you the link slap detected, protocol flaps detected. And now say that I was going to open up another session. Let's go to do, 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 Python code practice. I'm actually trying this on the fly, so I don't even know if this is going to work. So if it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, well, if it does, then heck yeah. If it doesn't, then I'll do another video. How about that? But I know it works on my desktop. If it doesn't work here, I'll show you guys in my uh, PyCharm. So technically, I should be able to do a nano devices.csv. Don't trip. Awesome. And then now you guys see that it's looping between the 192.168.1.5 and it's just going between those two so what happens if I add this node say dot eleven say save bam now let's go back here and see if it's gonna start picking up eleven Okay, so it's reopening the file now, and then 11 should come after 2. So there's a 2. Perfect. So as you can see, it actually now read 11. So that's the point that where I, where this is be awesome that say that, you know, I'm running this as a job in a Docker container, and I have it mounted to a volume, and it's monitoring that volume. And so I can have another service that's writing files to that volume and then this service is all its job is is just parsing those logs. And then I might send up an SMTP forwarder to send me emails. I might have it send another action to another another service to trigger off a job. It all depends. So this is where you start really getting powerful when you start getting little little abstractions like this with your devices and and you can start building on your scripts and, and building systems that can actually be really beneficial um, to you and your job. So, yeah, if you guys uh, liked it, let me know. Uh, subscribe. Uh, appreciate it. Um, if there's anything in particular you would like to see me write, um, drop a comment and, uh, and I'll write it up for you. All right. Until then, thanks again. Later.